Tiffany, welcome to Lessons of the Lash Entrepreneur Show. Why don't you go ahead and share uh, where you're from, who you are, what you do. Sure. Um, I'm Tiffany Federico and I own Bright Eyes Beauty Bar out of Worcester, Massachusetts. And um, we started out as a, a bridal hair and makeup team and then um, went more towards lashes. We do both um, and I want to pick up my whole lash business. So I actually, during the pandemic or prior to the pandemic, I got pregnant and I had to quickly start someone, you know, to cover for myself, had no idea what I was doing. So here I am. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are two years later. All right. Okay. So kind of talk me through, um, prior to joining the mastermind and even becoming aware that the mastermind was something that was available to you, what were kind of your, your pain points or your struggles that you were facing, let's say like October, November of last year? I would say, honestly, making sure I was doing things properly. You don't really have guidance in the industry whatsoever. You may have a few, you know, colleagues here and there, but you, you know, you don't know technically. If they you know don't know. Right. Yeah. You don't know what you don't know and you don't know what to ask. Um, and I also was overpaying, which I didn't even know as well until I met you and had the whole conversations. Um, so it's made a huge difference. It's opened my eyes on how to properly hire a team structure wise, pay wise, um, and be successful in that. Okay. Awesome. So when we're talking about properly, you're talking about legalities, you had 1099s. Is that correct? Yes. I okay. did. Yeah. And you were paying them how, what it was a commission-based model. Yep, I was doing 50% commission. Okay. Okay. So I think that's probably pretty relatable and pretty standard for what those that don't understand the laws and the yep. rules and the profitability that, I mean, you really are the target person for this program because we talk about being legal and profitable yes. um, because now tell me why you chose that path. Like what was it that you were experiencing or seeing other businesses do, or why did you choose 1099 and a 50% commission? What was the justification for that? So the artists, um, I have obviously an accountant and, um, the artist I hired for events is very sporadic. I don't do hair. I don't do a lot of the services. Um, so I hired them 1099. One of those girls happens to be the girl that I hired on to replace me. So I kept her that way, not realizing that's an issue. Um, and I, you know, I had no clue that that would, you know, be a problem for me legally down the road. So when you started, you know, I joined the Lashpreneur Society, I want to say it was maybe August or September of, of 2021. Um, and you started posting about your mastermind and bringing up pain points. And I immediately clicked on it. And I was like, I need this because it's, it's exactly what I need someone to guide me in the right direction. So yeah, that's, beautiful. That's how, yeah. Yeah. And I think you made a good point because when you have services and we'll kind of talk a little bit about the legalities and why 1099, at least here in the U S independent contractors is uh, an illegal, most of the time in our industry an illegal misclassification of employment is because when you have, when you're doing hair and makeup and whatever, you're the primary business owner and you're contracting out one of the services to provide for that. So it does make sense for your bridal business. If yeah. you don't do hair and you're a makeup artist and you're coming in for a one-time event that you bring in somebody else and you get yeah. the main payment and you kind of cut them a slice of that. Yeah. So that would make sense in that, that structure. When we're yeah. talking about creating a scalable business model where you're growing out a business that you already have established, mm -hmm. the primary points that um, the IRS gets real unhappy in our industry with is if the service provider is providing the same service as the primary business, you are no longer independent right. of each other. Yeah. Right. And so even independent contractor, you need to think about how dependent are the two businesses on each other because an independent contractor is their own business. Right. So exactly. if the primary business is collecting payment and then paying somebody out, that's not necessarily independent. If the more successful the service provider is, the more successful the main business is, they're again, not independent. So it right. gets really blurry. Yeah, uh, and absolutely. that's why they want to have very clear distinctions between what the two different um uh, businesses are or that they're classified properly with employees. So when you, when we started, okay, so tell me what clarity did you get on our hello call? So as part of the application, you go basically through an interview and we have a chit chat about your business. Yeah. What made you kind of go, yep, this is something that I need to be a part of based on that hello call or the clarity you got in the direction you wanted to take your business? There were a lot of things, obviously what I have mentioned. Um, also, I work really hard. I work every single day. I'm on my computer till one in the morning sometimes, especially with my events. Um, and I'm like, I, I'm still not paying myself. Why am I not paying myself? 
Yeah. And that's something I am currently working on. Um, and it's, it's just, it's, it's really, you know, made me think about things and like, why am I doing this? Like, I enjoy this work, but I also need to enjoy my family time. I need to pay myself. Like, I, like, why am I working so many hours? I've never, I would never work for someone for free. So why right. am I doing it for myself? And, you know, I do want to provide good benefits, but I also need to cover myself. So yeah, that was a big thing for me. Yeah. And again, when you're paying out that 50% commission, there's not much money left over to be able to no. pay the owner. And so you're no stuck in. Yeah, yeah. There's no way to scale that. So. Yeah. And then you end up stuck in the treatment room because your clients are basically paying the payroll of your team members. And exactly. so you're kind of in this, this stuck um, spot. And like you said, it's not scalable. Right. Can you, for your own definition, can you share what scalable means? Cause some people may not understand what a scalable business model is. Yeah. Uh, I basically want to take myself out of the treatment room um, and still pay myself a salary. I want to hire a number of girls um, where I can cover all costs and also pay myself and take care yeah. of the back end stuff. That's something that was really neglected. And it, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't in a bad situation, but the amount of things I've been able to handle since I started this coaching and I took myself out of the treatment room just to test it out, um, is absolutely insane how much I was, you know, missing out. And I feel like everyone on my team will benefit now that I'm getting all that in order. Yeah. And, it's know, working on the business rather than yes. in it. Yes. And, you know, clients, you know, have had a little bit of a hard time about it, but when I explain it to them, you know, like there are certain things I would like to offer you guys as well, but I can't even think about that because I don't have the time. I don't have the capacity. So, you know, when I come home, I have a, a almost two-year-old and, you know, I obviously want to give her the attention and she deserves it. And, you know, I don't, I don't just get to, you know, do all work. Like I, I need to balance my life as well. So yeah, a hundred percent. Cause I'm guessing that when you got into having your own business, the appeal of having freedom and flexibility with your time was like super oh, enticing. 100%, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then we get into it and all of a sudden we're like, we're working more now for ourselves than we did for somebody else. Like what the heck for free? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> You're like, wait a second. This yep. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think you are very much the standard of what I run into and why part of the reason why this program and the coaching exists is because there is this shift from employee mindset where the more you work, the more success you'll have, or the more you work, the more money you'll make. Because when you're an entrepreneur, that's not the case. And when right. you're talking about creating a scalable business, you're, you're not scalable. You have finite right. amounts of time to be able to right. dedicate to various different aspects. And yeah. so when we create a scalable business model, we start removing the owner's time as the metric that grows the business. And so when you're talking about building out a team, especially when it comes to processes, which is what we teach heavily in this program is the step-by-steps. Once you've done it once and you get the end result of like a fully onboarded and trained team member, it's copy and paste from there. It doesn't take any more of your time to right. implement that process again, as opposed yeah. to when you're solo, you can only take so many clients in a day, you run out of time and days a week, you run out of time that you're capped in your income. Right. So yeah. Yeah. yeah Beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me kind of about um, your experience of the program. What is it that from your words and your viewpoint has the program been like? Oh, it's been amazing. And, you know, you obviously, when you first sign up for something, you don't know what to expect, but, you know, being a part of the Lashpreneur Society, I was already getting a ton of great information um, as a solo artist. And um, with the group that you bring in, um, it's pretty cool to be able to a relate to them or hear other issues that they're having that you haven't run into yet or may have. Uh, and you guys can kind of bounce ideas off of each other. Um, so it's pretty cool to have other people alongside you. So you, you don't feel like you're alone in this. Um, it's, you know, there are a lot of common issues that people, you know, may not realize. And it just, it, it makes you feel more comfortable being able to um, relate to other business owners. Yeah, unless alone, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And like yeah. I said, you, you can have your, your colleagues around here, but like, they may not even tell you the right information. They may not want to share what they've done or, you know, and I just feel like this is actually more of a community as opposed to just kind of like scrapping pieces here and there and, you know, hoping for the best. So, yeah. And like you said, you guys are all on the same journey together. You may be at different places and different right. spots on that journey, but that's almost like letting you know, Hey, here's what's ahead. Um, yes. Like we have one member who has two locations with like 20 team members. So if you ever wanted to get to that level, you know, okay, she's dealing with these kinds of issues that I'm not at my business, but at least now I've seen a formula that she's implementing that could work. So I don't have to have that same struggle if I choose to get to that level. 
And another thing I, I learned too, and it's helped me a lot is um, a stop being so hard on yourself. Um, it's not easy as a business owner and it's, it's also okay to make mistakes. Um, you know, like you just mentioned, one of our uh, members has multiple locations and she still deals with issues and that's normal. I think I put a lot of pressure on myself thinking like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. Like, what did I do wrong? And it's not necessarily that it's part of the business. You're going to run into different situations all the time. Um, and it's okay. You know, yeah. taking a second step, step back, take yourself out of it for a minute and look at, look at it as a business standpoint, instead of a personal, you know, emotional standpoint. Yeah, that that's a huge, huge. Yeah. yeah, that's a massive perspective. Yeah. Um, there's two things I heard you kind of say in there is one, it's uh, <laughs> entrepreneurship is not necessarily the journey to no longer having problems. Right. Uh, <laughs> like no matter what level you get at, there's just going to be different problems. Some are more <laughs> expensive. You get to more expensive problems, the bigger your business is. Um, and you deal with a lot more people, especially at Rose's level, who we're specifically talking about, right? She's got way more attitudes, opinions, uh, behaviors, yeah. limiting beliefs coming in, right? And so it's more of a management kind of um, creating optimizing processes so that it fits for any type of team member. And then also giving yourself some grace and having some other people to look at to go, okay, I, it doesn't mean that I'm bad at business. It just yes. means there's a problem I haven't solved yet. Exactly. And so yeah. that can be much more motivating. Yeah. And it's more of like, okay, this happened. What's the solution instead of panicking and worrying about the mistake that was, has been made. So, right. Yes. Yeah. Focusing on progress, not perfection. Yes. That is the last exactly. way. <laughs> yes, exactly. Love it. Yep. So yeah. out of the three different uh, components, let's kind of break each one down. So there's the content. How has the content impacted your business? So like the, the topics that in the trainings that we go through. Everything has been super helpful. Um, I take notes like a mad woman and I always reference my notes. I, um, it's kind of like my guide now to, you know, what I'm doing going forward. If I have questions. I'll, I'll reach back to that. Um, you touch every subject, um, you know, that a business owner needs to know starting with legalities, obviously that's the most important. So if you're not doing that right, then you got to take a step back and, you know, go from there. So yeah. what's been your favorite training so far? I, I honestly look forward to all of them. Um, I can't even think right now. So there's finances, legalities, the onboarding process, the culture and the vision, the 90 day onboarding, the leadership and management. We haven't gotten into marketing yet, but that'll be next month. I would say culture and vision, figuring out yeah. what your vision is, because if you don't have a vision, you don't have a, a way forward as far as, you know, keeping everything consistent. So once yeah. your vision is there, that's, that's super helpful. Beautiful. Okay, let's talk about the coaching component. So there's the coaching, like the hot seat coaching calls. Um, and then there's also like the coaching that you've probably received from the other girls as well. So what, how has that impacted your business um, or you? I love the hot seats because every, you know, once we get off our main call, you know, I know I have another week and a half or two weeks to gather any questions I have. And then, you know, I, we shoot them off in the, in the hot seat call. Um, you answer our questions. The other girls can give their perspective. So um I don't know. That's, that's so valuable. All that information, because again, you're getting perspective from different businesses, different locations, you know, um, different parts of the state. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So the, the hot seat really is where this mastermind aspect comes to it. So the mastermind by definition is we get a bunch of different minds together to create one great mind. So all of our ideas, experiences, um, opinions, whatever feedback all comes together that we get you a really great solution rather than if it was just you and maybe one other person. It's, yep. you know, in this particular group, we had the six of you guys and myself all coming together with really great solutions. Whenever you're facing an obstacle or challenge, you don't know how to handle. Yep. So that's our hot seat. Yeah. And what I like too is, uh, you know, we have a group chat. You suggested when our first call to, you know, somehow connect with each other. And that has, that's been amazing too, because on a random Wednesday at 6 p.m. I run into an issue. I can message the girls and they'll give me their their opinion or vice versa. And um, we just all have each other's back. And it's really yeah. cool. So. Yeah. So that's the community part. So how is the community yeah. aspect? Yeah. How is yeah. the community? That's the third component. What? How has the community been beneficial to you over the last few months? Oh, it's been, it's, it's a confidence booster, you know? Yeah really makes you feel like, okay, I can, I can do this on your worst day. You're like, Nope, I still got it. Like, it's fine. Everything will work out. You know, I'll run it by the girls. I'll run it by Tara. Um, so it's nice to have that community and, you know, I know we'll continue that on. So, yeah, 
been, it's been amazing. Yeah. I think I've heard that feedback from every single one of you of like, this yeah. is, this is my group for life. These are my biz besties. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. We started here together. Why, why stop it? You know? So yeah. it's pretty cool. Beautiful. Okay. Um, so to kind of wrap up, if somebody's on the fence about joining, not sure whether they're like, if you could talk to the Tiffany of six or seven months ago, and she was on the fence deciding whether this program was right for her, what advice would you give her to help her make the decision? Knowing it's not right for everybody, right? Like it's, it's right. an intense program. Um, but what advice could you give somebody who's maybe considering it? Um, well, I will start by saying it's hundred percent worth it. You never know what you're getting yourself into, um, when you first join any type of program, um, but just the the knowledge that you were able to give, and you know, if you're even questioning starting a team, this is the place to be. You know, it, you're probably in a better place not having a team and then you know joining. But it's also good for people who do have the team because again, there are so many factors that you know come into play that you would have never thought about before, and you can just start implementing things from that point on. Um, I. I would, you know, 100% recommend it to anybody who's even questioning, you know, if they're, they're working too much or, you know, they, they're thinking about starting something else and, you know, getting more people involved. I just think it's a good place to start for sure. And it's, you know, the best advice you're going to get. And, you know, it's, it's a great way forward. So beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much to be, Oh, one more thing, share your win. You have a big win this week. I am sending out an offer letter today for a new yeah. hire. Yes. yes. And on a totally different pay type of scale, I used to do commission and have realized that I will never be able to pay myself in that way. <laughs> so I'm starting her off at an hourly rate. She seems great. All the you know, models loved her and her references were great. So wish me luck on this. <laughs> yes. So this is the first team member she's hired following the, pro uh, the yes. program, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's huge. And that's amazing. And I loved it on our last uh, coaching call. She's like, shh, the girls next door doing her practical. Yes. So she was, As I Tiffany was on the, yes, <laughs> Tiffany was on the coaching call with us while her, her new candidate was doing the interview. So that is amazing. Yeah. Well, Tiffany has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your journey. If you guys are interested in joining the mastermind or even just applying, if you need clarity, apply, and then we can have a little chit chat. There's no obligation to join. If you do apply, um, we will talk about that on the hello call. So you can go to lashpreneur.com slash mastermind application to apply. If you have any questions, hit me up in the DMs on Instagram. Otherwise, Tiffany, thank you so much. And we'll talk to you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye, Tara. Bye.